Is that right? I am a spectator. You're spectating today? Okay. All right. That means that you two have got lots of time to talk. So the show. It's you are the show today, which is good. <laughs> you got to see. I get I, used I, to that. For anybody that's watch. Oh, let me put the screen share up for you, Gabe. Um, no, what the hell did I just do? Yeah, no, I just did it. Um, so just fill a little bit of time before so Facebook lets everybody know that we're here. Um, I actually got to see these two guys in live in real in real life That's IRL cool. as as the kids like to say. <laughs> as we That's say right. as we say we're hip and cool, right? <laughs> that was the that was the highlight of the last few days. Last when was that? That was Thursday. Thursday, Thursday. amazing. Yeah, it was good. It was really. Although I was one of the, so okay so just for anybody who cares so they had they had a sort of name tags which I have I hate I hate name tags but oh. anyways. so I had a name tag on the whole bit so they had this thing where you could decide you had a you had a green dot you could put on your thing or a red dot that you could put on your thing and the green dot meant that it was okay if you you would accept hugs I of course put a red dot on <laughs> in like, fact you were the only red dot I saw maybe there were others but. I only saw Julie with the red dot. I think I was the only red dot. I was kind of cracking as up I myself. Took a, I took a step away. I took a but, step away as soon as I saw. Well, <laughs> but I kind of did it for everybody else's protection. Because I was, <laughs> I did have a cold from the previous week. And I wasn't oh. sure I had had COVID. So when I, I tested negative. Or else I would not have gone, obviously. <laughs> um, but yeah. Could have been a false days, negative. Days, you never know either. So I know. I know. Also, but I, this was one that went up my this this was cold. a this was a brain one though that like went they they my eye it was coming out of my eyes oh. they went up pretty far. <laughs> 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 so. All right, let's get to some recommendations. It's gonna go Gabe and Tom. So Gabe, take us away. I will start with one of the strongest authors I've ever read consistently putting out powerhouse books. Um, Sarah Hall, who has published uh, Booker nominated books. She is uh, um, reviewed really, really well in the UK and here. She's a Brit. Um, this might be her best book. Uh, she is um, taking on the a pandemic, has hit, oddly enough. And she was working on this uh, a while ago. Um, but it's, you know, it's. Uh, uh, one of those books where something has really shaken the world up, a pandemic has come across uh, the entire world. Uh, we're in a post-apocalyptic uh, existence. And there's been quite a few of these books recently before and during the COVID uh, era. And we, you know, we just, we did the, um, shoot, uh, ah, I'm gonna forget her name now. Uh, it'll come to me. Uh, last year, which was nominated for the Booker Prize, um, and uh, it, it's going to bug me. Sorry, too many books in my head right now. Just got, got done with sales conference, too, this morning, this afternoon, today. A lot of books. That'll, um, anyways, that'll do it to you. <laughs> mind numb. Um, anyways, uh, Sarah writes, a, she's a brilliant writer. She's a really magnificent writer. This is probably, I think, I've been reading her since Electric Michelangelo, which I think was her first book uh, that we published. She's been all through our Harper imprints. Um, these imprints work independently of each other. She's been a tough sell. And I'm gonna be straight up with that fact that she's a tough sell. And I don't understand why, because she really, there's always a payoff when you read a Sarah Hall book. She's not the easiest. She's not the coziest. Um, but when you re finish reading a Sarah Hall book, you've been through something, you know, and you've been through something good. And it's always a really satisfying read. So what she does in this, world that she creates um, is just brilliant, you know, in its execution uh, and in, in its telling. Uh, as I said, we, these are, there's a, there have been a lot of these lately. Um, and this one, this book really, really stands out. Uh, and, you know, I think for a, an author of Sarah Hall's stature, um, I think that's saying a lot that this, uh, this is probably her best book. Uh, so loved it. So Burn Coat, it goes on sale tomorrow. Uh, don't be intimidated. Uh, I think the you we need to read authors like Sarah Hall. I think we need to read authors that are going to push our brains uh, in different directions. And she's very imaginative uh, and a brilliant writer. And there's nothing 
you're never gonna you're never gonna feel like you got cheated when you read a Sarah Holt. Was it Mary like... Lawson? Was the one Mary Lawson? Was that the one you were trying to think of? No. Um, okay, never mind. Uh, I, t- I looked now, at the book. I tried to look at the Booker list, but I couldn't figure <laughs> out who you're talking about. <laughs> uh, Diane Cook. Oh, okay. There you go. All right. Sounds like a good one. Thank you. Yeah, it I sounds talk- like she's a writer. She's a writer that I haven't read her, but her time will come. It's just a matter of which book. They refer to her as a writer's writer, and somebody mentioned something that sometimes when they say a writer's writer, it's not necessarily a good thing because they're not usually successful writers. Sometimes these writers, writers like John LaRue and people like that. Right. It's but, kind uh, of like a backhanded compliment in some yeah. ways. But, but you but know what so. though? Those are the ones that feed my soul usually. It's like they might not be the, the they might not be the commercial success that they should be. But right. they're the yeah. but they're the ones that are writing that like oh my god this is just great right. writing, right? You know? Sometimes yeah. you you want to be sure. punched in the stomach you know with, by something you get tired of reading the same old things and yeah uh, sometimes yeah. it's really well done but she's amazing yeah all right Thank cool you. okay Tom okay so a few years ago we published a book called Tin Man by Sarah Winman which became an indie like it really was it was a it was a bestseller of sorts especially in indie bookstores beloved by indie bookstores around the country. So we have a new, this is so exciting. We have a new Sarah Winman, still life. Can you see that? It's, this, this print of the jacket does not do the gorgeous jacket justice, but trust me, it's gorgeous. So she's back and I cannot tell you how much I love this book. It is it's for, for pure pleasure and enjoyment, my favorite book of the year. There's no doubt. Wow, really? Um, yeah, I loved it. I adored it. Um, and one of the reasons, I'll, this is, I'll get to the, what the book's about, but one of the reasons is since we have time, uh, Gabe and I can just stretch out. But um, <laughs> I read the first 50 pages, exactly. I read the first 50 pages as we sometimes do before conference and got a feel for it. Wasn't 100% sure I would get back to it because there's just so many books to read. But then booksellers, including booksellers at Warwick, kept telling me how much they loved this book. So I read it late. So I read it not uh, on a deadline. I just read it kind of for pleasure over the last about two or three months ago, much more recently than a lot of these books. And so that helped, that was part of it too. I just read it because I, I was loving it. I couldn't stop reading. Um, so, and it's really different from Tin Man. I mean, in certain ways, there are definitely ways it's, it's similar, but um, it's a much more expansive story. So it starts off uh, end of World War II, um, we meet Ulysses, a 20-something English soldier at the end of the war. And just by chance, he meets uh, a woman much older than him, maybe even like 40 or 30, 30 years older than him, who's an art historian, who's there finding the art that's been hidden, you know, mm-hmm. doing kind of the monuments thing, right? Mm-hmm. And so they're two, they're, they're, they meet. And they don't know that this is like a, such an important meeting in their lives. But over the course of the next four decades, they will find out how central the two of them are to each other. So Ulysses goes back to England and to his East End London pub where he hangs out and has all these friends. Um, but, over the, but slowly he's drawn back to Italy and Florence. So that's also part of the pleasure of the book mm. is Florence. I mean, it is, oh, if, you okay. love, if you love Italy and especially Florence, this is, it's just all there. Um, and, the, and then it's the characters. So he brings this whole cast of characters to, from England to Florence. They open up, they kind of inherit, he inherits a pensione. And so, and then, but gradually it takes, it takes a while, but slowly but surely his life is drawn back to the art historian who he met so many years ago. Um, you fall in love with the characters, um, there's great meditations on art because Florence and Florence art is everywhere. Um, it's just, it's an incredible reading experience because you don't want it to end. Um, there's a moment in the book where the two characters have not seen each other since the war, but they're both in Florence at the same time and they keep missing each other. And you just like real people, you hope that they meet, like, you're like, oh no, please tell me they're going to meet again. Um, and, I, and Sarah Winman recently watched an interview with her and she talked about, she wanted to write a book that was, how did she describe it? Simply, joyous, joyous and entertaining. And when she said that, I was like, 
Well, you hit it out of the park because that's exactly how I felt. Um, so booksellers, again, are just, so this is a book that I'm sure is going to get great reviews. I'm sure it's going get, to get great media attention. But what's really most important to me is the love of indie booksellers again. So many booksellers have come to this book. Um, that that's going to be the and Warwick especially like you have so many I've been I know. hearing from booksellers I think um, it's like so, is it is it Marilee Adrian Marilee, Kim Kim for sure there's more though I mean each maybe, bookseller yeah. is, each bookseller is telling other booksellers about this book um, so just this is one like trust me just go buy mm -hmm. it you will love right. it trust the booksellers at Warwick trust them because they'll tell you to buy it. Um, and then the last thing, there was a um, central part of the book, which I didn't know anything about, was this massive flood in Florence in 1966. Um, and that is a real key moment in the book. But there's a, book, a bookseller in Colorado who also loved the book, but she, she, this, she wrote me this email and she, she, she just adored it. But she said, our family spent the summer of, in Italy in 1976, so 10 years after the flood. While my dad and I were at ski camp in Northern Italy, my mom met her lifelong German pen pal in Florence. And every morning for three weeks, they worked at the History Museum, working on items damaged from the flood in exchange for a room at a pension. They still had items to work on after 10 years. I remember the watermarks around the city. So, I mean, she should write her own book, I believe, but that's the pull of Florence too. I right. think once you experience it, um, oh, and I forgot to mention that there's a parrot on the cover and the parrot is, a, is quote Shakespeare, he's hilarious, great, great, great character. Um, and then just to top it all off, but not too much, Ian e. Forster, a room, with a, view of, a room with a view fame, makes a cameo appearance toward the end. It's perfect. So she's wrapped so it buy, all together. So it's like, yeah. Buy this, buy Still Life by Sarah Winman. You won't regret it. Love the cover too. It's a really good cover. I know. It's it's fantastic. Yeah. Yeah, it's, yeah they didn't they they didn't they went the right direction on that. Not yeah. Love it. So yeah, lots it. of lots of war works love. That's for sure. Yeah. So well Tim, it was so good. I'm glad this is a strong follow-up. Yeah. But as I say, different, because that was so really intimate and this has a much bigger canvas, but uh, yeah, just as good. But it's still not a huge book though, right? No, no. Uh, it's like the 350, book, it's like a 350 yeah, page kind of yeah, thing. Yeah. yeah, it's not 500, it's 350, right. yeah. And yeah. and she she talked about, when I heard her talking about the books, how the characters, like she didn't intend even for it to be that long, but the characters took themselves from this pu pub in London to Italy. And that just added to the kind of the fun. And that's all there. But yeah, it reads so quickly, you, but you don't want it to end. Love it. And I love the fact that, like you said, it was, you read it for more of a pleasure thing than a, than a have to kind of thing. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. All right. I'm going to talk about, let me share my screen here. Hold on a second with you. I'm, I should know after this many years of doing this now. <clears throat> so you see, we got some great things coming, but tomorrow we've got Allison Galen joining us at five o'clock tomorrow. Pacific time talking about the collective she's going to be with Laura Lipman so that's going to be a great discussion um and I what I didn't know about um Allison Allison was nominated for the Edgar four times so she's got some like serious chops going on there with with her writing of the thriller mystery genre um this particular one which I love the tagline for I gotta scroll down here just how far will a grieving mother go to right a tragic wrong I love that. It's like, what the heck? So, um, and like Gabe and I were talking in the green room, Laura Littman's just a gem too. So to have these two uh, powerhouses together in a conversation, I think is going to be really good. So if you're not doing anything tomorrow by the collective, join us for an event at five o'clock. Yours truly gets to do the intro and the Q and A. So you get to see more of me. Isn't that, a, maybe I shouldn't have said that. That might turn another no away. another reason to tune in. <laughs> so many reasons to, to tune in. So what many reasons do today? To what will exactly. she do today? What, what will be what will happening? <laughs> Love it. All right, Gabe, take us away to the next one. Well, I am really looking forward to that because I've been mired in. Uh, I just fit, was been reading the Ross King bookseller of Florence, and I've been 
reading that little what is it uh, modern library Florence stories. Oh, the, so, so the still life. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Oh, the yeah. Cease No Boom yeah, yeah. Uh, Venice book. I've been reading that in between all this stuff. So I've been really, this is the next thing on that. You list. need still life. Yeah, for sure. If so you can't travel that. there, you might as well go there through a book. You know? Yeah. You know? That's the way. Oh, look, the collective. You are talking I, about it. Look at you. I threw it on there real quick since we have time, but I just wanna, wanted to reinforce what you said uh, before I move on to my next book. But she's okay. she's one of those authors who's been nominated, Allison, for, uh, like you said, an Edgar Ford time. She was a paperback original in Mass Market. Um, it went to a different it, screen, Gabe. Yes. Oh. I jumped off. That was only oh. a show, a show real oh, quick. Oh, you were just showing, just showing about. some love? You were just showing some love? Showing some love. Okay. Uh, I'm a big fan of Allison Galen. She writes a really good mystery. And this is actually a step up, I think. Uh, this is a little big higher profile. And, uh, twisty and uh what was that the cloud chamber the some star chamber where the uh uh it was a movie in the 80s 70s that that kind of reminded me of oh yeah, yeah yeah getting revenge um but the unknown women of the same by brooks hansen brooke has not written a book in a long time a very well reviewed author <laughs> in the past and um this comes from delphinium delphinium is a small press that we publish they publish half dozen books a year maybe a few more than that um very independent they always have really strong editors that find really interesting writers that have uh, either had really great careers and haven't written something in a while like brooke hansen uh, or or the next big thing hector tobars was published by delphinium before he uh, he hit the fame with the tattooed soldiers so they have a really keen eye, uh, very small press, as I said, and they are always interesting. So this is a, a very oft used narrative. Uh, a woman, uh, in this instance, a really beautiful woman is found uh, in the Seine, drowned, uh, and what is going on, uh, the mystery of who she is and how she got there uh, drives the plot of this book. And it's Paris, it's at a really interesting time in history, uh, and it is uh, just a really pleasant narrative and a place to be historical fiction uh, at its best, but it's not really, it doesn't really read like a historical narrative necessarily. I think the place and time is set, but uh, it's just a really kind of timeless narrative. It's odd to say how, but she does a really terrific job of bringing us this dead character. Everything revolves around trying to discover who she is and what she was. And then there's, all the stories that are going on around uh, the body and the people involved. Really well done. Uh, there's, you know, it, I, it's, it's a hard book to describe in that there's so much going on uh, in spite of the very simple premise, but the cast of characters is really wonderful. And I think you'll find Brooke Hansen, you'll want to go back and read her backlist when you're done, uh, because I think uh, it, uh, it made me just like, I want to read more by this author. So I think that will go around. we got a cool package. Uh, and as I said, Delphinium has got some really, really interesting uh, vision of what they're looking for in literary works. And uh, it's always that, fun to see what they're That doing cover on. is awesome. It's a great I cover. know, I kept staring. I couldn't take my eyes off it. I know, but yeah. then when you were describing it, so it's, like, what it, it's like, it kind of was a description of the book too, because it's like it sounds like you don't really know what you're what you're getting into and reading it. So. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. There's, a, there's a lot going on. Yeah, that's kind of how the cover was with me too. I was just sort of like, what's going on with this? Okay, we've got some comments coming in from uh, Facebook. So Beth Doherty, Tom says that Tin Man was one of her favorite books of all. It was um, a huge oh, one of her great. favorite books. So love to yeah, hear that. love to hear that. And Mine then um, Beth Johnson gave, uh, she's hoping to get to Warwick's one of these days when we can travel. I hear you on that. Although you live in Ohio, um, Beth, a bunch of us booksellers are coming to Cincinnati in February for a um, winter <laughs> That's right. So we're going to be taking over your city in February at some point. You're right in January. <laughs> no, February, yes. Um, she's got a lot of your suggestions, Gabe. Um, and Tom, the paper palace too. So she's a good, uh, nice. good one on the suggestions. But She's asking a question, which it's kind of, it's going to be kind of a hard thing to um, answer, Beth, is um, <laughs> Ohio booksellers making house calls. We did house calls too, Beth. It was crazy <laughs> during the shutdown. Um, can we explain how many presses are under each publisher? 
Um, oh. I don't even know if you guys would know how many presses you have. Do you? Do you? Well, let's Do you go. Really, let's hear Gabe go. Let's hear Gabe. You go. How many presses you got? We have a lot. We have Amistad. We have Del Day Street. We have Echo. We have William Morrow. We have Harper Paperbacks. We have Perennial, which is a paperback imprint. We have Graden House, which is a literary arm of uh, Harlequin. We have Park Row Books, which is a Harlequin imprint. We have Mira, so, Harlequin, so, so if you've got Harper, if you've got Harper Collins way at the top, way at the top. And these are all that, imprints of, right? That, and then, then these then imprints you, come in. Come in, but then like Harlequin's it's, but then under Harlequin, there's a bunch under there's that. There's a bunch. And then there's William Morrow. Aren't there a bunch under William Morrow too, or no? William Morrow, we have Custom House, and but Custom House is kind of part of William Morrow, but not because it's own imprint. So right. it's each one each one functions as um, an editorial uh, focus. They all they all have like Day Street yeah. is our show busy right. lifestyle. Uh, Dave Grohl comes out of Day Street as well as you know Cameron Diaz as uh, body image books. Um, Echoes our literary imprint. Perennials our literary paperback imprint. I mean, I could go on. It's just confusing, right. but um, yeah, sometimes you'll see the colophon, and it'll say Echo or William Morrow. Right. And then we have right. Harper, which is our main imprint. Uh, so Harper up here, Harper that that owns all of these still has its own imprint underneath that big umbrella. Yeah, I mean, if you which looked at it, same. sort of like a corporate chart. <laughs> the same is true for Random House. You have. Penguin, so you have Penguin Random, Random House, House all here, the way at the top. But you do have Penguin and Random House having imprints below, like actual imprints. Right. Besides yeah. what I saw, which is the main ones are Viking, Putnam, Riverhead, Penguin Press, Portfolio, Dutton, yeah. um, Penguin, uh, Paperbacks. Um, yeah. That's the those are the primary imprints. Avery, Tarcher, and the list goes on. And the list goes on. on. And, and, we won't even, and we won't even talk about the clients because that's a whole other. Oh my God, no, right? That's a whole and other Steve, ball And then Steve and Wade have their own right underneath the larger Penguin Random House. Yeah, yeah. Um, so like the two so books bad. I'm talking so about today are Putnam, but each week could be a Viking and a Putnam could be a right. You know. So Beth, there's really no easy answer to it. And for booksellers, um, it's really challenging because we have all of these publishers that we work with that have all of these imprints <laughs> underneath. So it's like, it's kind of fascinating. I think Ingram, the Ingram tool used to be much better. You used to be able to click on an imprint and it would tell you the house that it's from. It doesn't do that so much anymore. Oh, here comes Amanda with some maybe Amanda. Some Amanda has thoughts. Amanda uh, has I, some thoughts on this. Oh, I just wanted to share. I, I keep this at my desk. It, it's a oh. it's a oh. a list, and then just listening to y'all naming them off, I realized this is sadly already out of date. Oh yeah, <laughs> Dude, I'm, I'm like jotting them down well, as y'all are ticking well, them I'm, off. <laughs> I'm looking at that list. I I left off some. I left off Berkeley for one. Right, Berkeley's here. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, so it's it's hard sure to keep more. track of them all, but we do our best. Right, we so, just bought Houghton Mifflin. I could bring right, that right, up. Right, right. Oh, right. right. So add that to the add that to the list too. And then like Workman just got yeah, bought by Hachette or something, I think. Yeah. Right, because yeah. Houghton Mifflin has. Uh, well, I guess is Harcourt still. Harcourt, Harper, yeah, Harcourt, uh, Houghton, Harcourt, whatever they were. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. Okay. So Beth, hopefully we answered, didn't answer your question, but we tried, we did our best. <laughs> we thoroughly confused you. We confused confused when we're all, everyone's confused, so it's okay. Yeah. But we, but at least Gabe knows who he works for. Tom knows who he works for. <laughs> <laughs> it's all good. For all, the right. Man. <laughs> all right, Tom. What so is what your matters name? are the books. The books are exactly. what really, you know, really who cares who publishes them, but there's the book. So, uh, so this, this book, The Family by Naomi Krupitsky, it, in certain ways, it shares a, common, a lot of common things with still life, um, also historical. Um, but the family, as you can tell from the typeface of the family, mm. to me, that calls back to The Godfather a little bit, um, because this is a debut novel. So a debut novel about two best friends, two girls, who are daughters of the family, the Italian mafia in Brooklyn. So it's a coming of age story 
for them in that world, growing up in that world. Um, and also Brooklyn in the 20s, 30s, 40s, I think it ends in the 50s. Brooklyn was a coming of age, it was coming of age and it's so different from what it is like now, of course. Um, so they live in the shadow of their father's world. So this is an untold story. Like it's, it's a novel, so it's, it's fiction. So she's imagining what that would have been like to be a young girl or and then woman in this very male dominated world. Um, so it's their best of friends um, and until something happens to one of their fathers and that starts to split them apart. It's really suspenseful, um, but really terrific first novel. It's um, the San Francisco Chronicle reviewed it over the weekend, called it a dazzling debut. Um, Tara Singh Carlson, I don't often talk about editors, but she is an editor at Putnam, most famous for Where the Crawdads Sing. So that's, oh. that's a calling card. There she knows, she has an eye for that, that perfect sweet spot of literary and commercial. So this is that, you know, couldn't be more different than where the crawdad thing, but the Great. same editor, same sensibility, wanted to, you know, bought this book and wanted to publish it for that kind of reason. But she calls it a cross between The Sopranos and Elizabeth Gilbert's City of Girls, which I kind of like. Oh, interesting. Um, and then I would throw in, you got to throw in Elena Ferrante also for the, um, the female friendship. Female um, friendship. So out tomorrow in hardcover, um, definitely going to get a lot of attention over the coming weeks. Um, great commercial read, The Family by Name. Oh, and she's also, I love too, that she's a former bookseller up in oh. the Bay Area. Oh, I love it. Always love that. And yeah. I also love that they chose the Godfather font for The Family. I know. I know. <laughs> Good job on that. We did publish, Putnam, Putnam, pretty sure Putnam published The Godfather back in the oh. 60s. So, okay. it's all in oh, the family. Cool. It's all in the family. But it's also <laughs> it really took, interesting. It just took us a while. It took us a while to get to tell the women's story, but it only took 50 years. But. Oh, well, well, at least we got to it <laughs> at some point. But it's also interesting, though, because the families most of the time didn't know what the dads were doing. Yeah, you that's know? right. And that's part, that's part of the book, too. Yeah, yeah. because it's like you're, they, they're coming home from work. They don't know where the money's coming from and what the, you know, right. what the lifestyle is until right. something, like you said, until something happens. And then it's like, yeah. oh, really? Ooh, okay. and I think right. they kind of know. I think. Well, I think maybe you kind of put your head in the Camilla on the bit. Sopranos knew. She tried to play she, them. Camilla knew. Yeah. I don't know. My yeah. dad was in electrical contracting. I sometimes wonder. Anyways, that's a whole other. That's a, that's a whole other topic that we could talk about some other construction, time. Construction, man. Construction. <laughs> construction, man. I don't and know. And gasoline. Yeah, I'm just kind of thinking, but I don't know. <laughs> All right, I'll talk about the other two events I was going to talk about after. So let's go lightning round. So Gabe. Lightning round. Funny you should bring up Los Sopranos because we have switch over. Woke oh. up this morning, which is the theme song. I should be playing it. Um, it. So uh, essential for fans with revelations on every page. It is uh, Michael Imperioli with Stephen Sharipa and uh, Michael Imperioli who has written his couple of his own books an author in his own right, uh, is writing the definitive oral history of The Sopranos. And I saw that there's a, also a uh, godfather, uh, leave the, take the gun, leave the cannoli. Uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that, that's floating around. That's oh, yeah, right. As well. right. Um, I think it'll be nice, a nice book. And I think, to me, The Sopranos is one of the best, maybe one of the top two, three best shows. I don't really do that because there's so many really Things that really I really, really like, but I just, time. I just think The Sopranos is brilliant, uh, always, uh, and one of the best shows of all time, hands down. Uh, so I'm a big fan. So I just can't get enough Sopranos, and I know that a lot of people like that. It's just such a brilliant, such a brilliant show. And Michael Imperioli was there from the ground up until Tony strangles him in the mud. Oh, spoiler uh, alert! Spoiler alert! Spoiler alert! My bad. Uh, so I, I think it's a uh, there's. You know, there's Soprano fans out there. It's on HBO, um, uh, you know, on the backlist uh, all the time there. You can just click on and watch all of the episodes. My mother-in-law actually mentioned last week, she started re-watching the Sopranos and she's like, brilliant. She thinks, still thinks they're brilliant the second time around. So there's a lot of fans out there. I think this will be a nice Christmas gift. I think it'll be a nice book for anybody who's, who's a fan. Uh, can't go wrong. 
I've been um, rewatching some of The Sopranos. Yeah. Because of the new movie, which I haven't watched yet, but I wanted to right. refresh my memory. And the episode, they they stand up. They stand up. Right? Those are the two actors, right? Because I saw, I didn't, I never watched The Sopranos. Those are the two actors that wrote that with the ghostwriter, with the other writer. Is that right, Gabe? Oh, I don't know. Um, Imperioli was the, not on the writing side. Christopher. Sheriff? Sheriff? Oh, I don't know. I don't know. Because I was, um, was Christopher, right? What's that? Wasn't he Christopher on the show? Michael Imperioli was. Okay. Yeah, and then and Steve Sharippo, Shir- he was also an actor. He was, right? He was uh, Janice's husband and uh, um, <laughs> I think. Well, the only reason I'm the saying is I saw, I saw those names because I, I do the most of the Twitter for Warwick. So I go, on, I go into that cesspool once a day. But um, I was looking, I was looking at, and they those names kept popping up, and I was like, "Who are these guys?" So obviously, it's about the book, and obviously, it's like I did not know. Yeah, I think they were both in the cast, and they probably interviewed the rest of the cast and directors, and yeah, there we go. And little little Stevie got his own book out out there as well. That's right. All righty. Oh, he was Bobby. He was Bobby. 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 Right. What was Bobby's last name? Does it say? Yeah. I love their last names. I lost it. All right. All right. It's okay. okay, Tom, who do you got? Bobby Bacalari. Bobby Bacalari. Bacala. It was about that's right, Bacala. It was worth it's worth it was worth the wait. That's a good name, Bobby Bacala. <laughs> that's a good name. Um, so for me, the lightning round is an easy one. Tana French out in paper tomorrow, the searcher. Last year we did it in hardcover. This was, um, you know, it's hard to say which is Tana French's best. They're all fantastic. If you haven't read Tana French, why not start with the new paperback? It's not part of the series. So it's, she's written two now that are outside her series, The Dublin Murder Squad. This one is the first time she's written about an American character. So it's a Chicago cop who has a lot of, um, a lot of stuff went down in Chicago. He's retired now, trying to get away from crime and punishment and and all and all of you know his entire life by moving to Ireland rural Ireland uh, not building a house but you know remaking an old house um, but of course a kid an Irish kid shows up with a story and he's drawn into a crime in in uh, in Ireland um, she's fantastic um, this is probably I think it might have been I, mean, I think each book is bigger than the one before so this is probably her best-selling book um, but you can't go wrong starting wherever you want to start with Town of Friends. So search her out tomorrow in paperback. Excellent. Yay. I always love it. I, Heather at the store was a huge fan of Town of French. Oh, so, yeah. Yeah, I remember she's, her. I mean, I, I love, I think she's one of our very best writers, not just crime writers, just writers, yeah. period. She's terrific. Yeah. Did they, did they do a series? Did they do a... Um, on there was a series of stars yeah that was something. kind of a, a mashup of the first two books i think okay it was called in the first book's called in the woods in the woods yeah i think it was maybe called in the woods but it also involved this, some of the like the likeness was the second book so it mashed up the two together okay all right i got to talk about some events because that's my that's my job that's my day job <laughs> this is my side this you is my this side for fun this is yeah, my side, side hustle. hustle. This is my side Your hustle. Side hustle. <laughs> <laughs> Being on here with everybody. Okay. Ken Follett, we're hosting next week. Never. He's back to his thrillers. That comes out next Tuesday. We get him on. On the on sale date. We get him on sale date. So yay. Um, independent booksellers. So we have him. I think Rake Straw, a couple other bookstores are joining in with us on that one. We found out he's being interviewed by a baroness. So I'm not sure I've ever hosted a Baroness before, but I love that. I so, bet you have. You must I don't, have. I don't know. All I can think of is Baroness Schrader, but I don't think it's her. Um, so anyway, so I think that's it. It's so cool. So Ken Follett, a Baroness, join us, join us next yeah. week for that. And then you see right next to that, Brené Brown. Come on. Big that's going to be a great one in December. So join us for that. Um, Buy that for your friends. Everybody join in. You know it's going to be a great event with her. And then um, just some fun things. I, Brian Selzik's going to be at the store in person next week. 
Zibby Owens has a book coming out with a, it's a compilation, Moms Don't Have Time to Have Kids, which I think is hilarious. So we're involved with that next Thursday. So check out our website. We have lots of stuff going on. Sebastian Younger ended up having to cancel his tour with us to the West Coast tour, but that's okay. We love Sebastian. We had him virtually, but um, hopefully one of these days we'll have him back in the store. So lots of good stuff happening at Warwick's. Um, we're planning our 125th um, celebration. So right. if everybody is in San Diego, we're having an open house on the 21st of November. So come and join us. We're going to do champagne with the reps at 125. <laughs> So 125th anniversary at 125, we'll start champagne. That with is the reps. brilliant. So there we I go. Get it. Brilliant. <laughs> got it. <laughs> we got it. So um, anyways, another great week. Another great um, Rex, you guys. Thank you for joining us. And we will see everybody happy reading. And we will see everybody next Monday. Bye. <laughs>